Hey guys, welcome to our online webinar today. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes here. So we only have about nine people on. We have, I think, 60 or 70 registered, so we'll give a few more minutes until everybody um, comes on. Now, just to make sure before we get started, if everybody can see our um, <coughs> presentation here, um, if you can't see it, write it in the question box at the bottom. If you can hear me and you can see um, functional I ASTM webinar, please just put your uh, put your hands up so we can see that everybody can see and everybody can hear that what we have going on for today. Yeah, just uh, we'll give another two more minutes. I just I'm getting a couple of messages here. People are having a hard time signing in, um, so this will be recorded. So if anybody does miss it, we are going to email it out later on um, as soon as we're done. So we'll give you a few more minutes. So if you need to grab a drink, grab a notepad. Um, we're going to start at about one o three local time. So I'm I'm in uh, just Toronto, Ontario. So it's one o three local time. So about two minutes, we'll we'll get started. So let's get started. So again, we are um, we are going to be recording this day. So if you do have any questions, I'm going to try to answer them as we go on today. Um, so if you do have a question, there's a little chat box on your window there. Just feel free to ask it. If I don't get into it right away or don't answer your question, I'll try to go through them all uh, throughout the, at the end of the presentation. But So if you do have questions, ask them right away, and we'll try to get through them all. So today we're the functional IASTM webinar. Today is July 1st. Um, some of you on this, it's July 2nd. If you're in Canada, happy Canada Day. It is a long weekend up here for most of us. So if you're spending time with us in Canada, thanks for taking time out of your uh, long weekend to be hanging out with us and learning some IASTM. So before we move on to this webinar, just a couple of things here. So a little bit more about our company. I'm just going to make this bigger for so we can see. So Innovative Health and Fitness Education. We're the developer of the M2T Blade and Vigor Connect Tape. We're also the creator of video tape and kinesiology tape education. We develop courses on proper utilization and integration of IASTM into practice and fitness. We're currently located in Stony Creek, Ontario, which is about half hour, 40 minutes outside of Toronto, and Papano Beach, Florida, USA, which is just more the southern tip of Florida. So we currently have courses for trainers, therapists, students, and doctors on soft tissue mobilization, um, soft tissue mobilization, exercise, and assessment. And we also sell the M2T Blade, which is the Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Mobilization Tool. So today's webinar. So we're doing more of an introduction, functional-based webinar today. So first, we're going to start talking about the about IASTM and what it is, theory, principles, and how it can help into your practice. We're going to go over the more of a functional approach of how we can take functional movement and integrate it into IASTM. So webinar after this. Please ask questions. There's a button on your screen where you can type your questions. You will get a recording sent to your email. So if there's something that we're talking about and you miss it, don't worry. This all is being recorded. We'll send it directly to you. Next thing is have fun. So this is a newer technique for um, a lot of people. So have fun, learn, and this is some great information that we're presenting today. So a few other programs by Innovative Health and Fitness Education. So we also run a program called Functional Dry Needling. 
Um, it is a fourth generation dry kneeling based on the systematic approach to the flow of peripheral nerves. It involves the use of all previous kneeling approaches together in one model. The functional points are responsible for maintaining the basis in the human body and largely used in pain management in sports and functional rehabilitation. So we're actually writing a webinar on um, plantar fasciitis and dry kneeling as well next week. Um, I believe it's Tuesday or Wednesday around the same time today. Um, if you want to get a link for that webinar, just please email our support team at support at m2tblade.com for the link. So what do you think IASTM is and how it can be incorporated into your practice? So if you know what it is, um, write, write it in the box. So I just want to know kind of where everybody is with knowledge-wise based on instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. So can everybody see the slides, or are they not on the, um... so someone's just saying they've lost the slides, or can everybody see the slides, or are they, are they gone? Okay, so no one can see the slides? Okay, give me 30 seconds just to fix this here. Now can we see the slides? So can everybody see the slides now? Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. They should be up for everybody now. Um, I think I just pressed the wrong button when I was trying to make the um, PowerPoint bigger. So make sure everybody can see the slides. Okay. So now what do you think IASTM is and what does it do? You're gonna come here. So IASTM stands for Instrument Assistance Soft Tissue Mobilization. It is a technique that we're using to help assess and treat the fat, the myofascial system, and get tissues moving a lot better. So again, we're using a tool to help prolong your treatments and get better results. Again, the tool is not to replace your hands, but to make your treatment a lot better. So before we treat tissues, we must properly assess. So everything that we do, we must start off with assessment. Now, our goal with our company is slightly different. If you've done our education before, we're not just about teaching you how to use an instrument. We're about functional movement, assessive, assessing, and corrective exercise. We don't want to just – anybody can go into YouTube and learn how to use a tool. We want to teach more of a whole process. So a lot of other competitors out there, they'll want to really beat up all the tissues and work through everything where we want to identify the exact issue of what's going on and treat the exact issue or dysfunction to help promote movement. So by, by doing our assessment, we do what's called a functional assessment review. Before we do any kind of instrument assistance soft tissue mobilization, we want to start off with what's called dynamic movement assessing. We want to, we want to see how somebody can move properly or where they're adhesed where they may have no mobility. Once we identify the key areas of restriction, we'll go into our treatment, which is including kinesiology tape and instrument assistive soft tissue mobilization. Once we do that, we're going to go into our corrective techniques. Now, a lot of other companies don't talk too much about corrective techniques, but we're going to do that a little bit today. We don't believe that you can just assess or treat the soft tissues without retraining the body how to move. So again, we're going to show you a quick corrective way to get to retrain the brain and get the body to move a little bit better. So first, assessment. Assessing should be the cornerstone of a treatment program. A treatment program should be based on one's capabilities, not just their dysfunctions and limitations. So we want to see what somebody can do and what they're restricted at doing. We start from a global to specific movement. So we always want to start off with squatting, lunging, uh, movements that we do every day. So any patient that always comes in, I always start off with a squatting motion. Squatting tells us a lot about how somebody moves, and it's a movement that we cannot go any day without performing. 
So there are many forms of assessing, and now we go over more functional movement screening-based stuff. Um, but you can also do performance, range of motion, soft tissue palpation, and neurological. From there, we go into our treatment. Our goal is to retrain movement patterns. We're going to start off with unilateral work. Now, <clears throat> this fourth line here is probably the most important line of the entire presentation. We always want to start with mobility, then go to stability. So what does that mean? So we always want to find out what's not moving and make it move better. If we look at injuries, we let's say we want to look at the knee. If we have pain at the knee, we want to look at the hip and the ankle. If we have immobility at the hip and the ankle, another joint has to move more or compensate to make up for that loss of range of motion, which is the knee. So again, we always want to find out what's not moving and make it move better. So if you go back to our knee case, if somebody has knee pain, we look at the ankle, we look at the hip, we create mobility between the, with those two joints using our instrument, and then we create stability through the knee. Once we create stability, we go into strength and movement patterns. So we're going to start off with the soft tissue, then we'll move to joint, and then we'll move to kinesiology taping. So the whole premise of this instrument is we want to create mobility. Now someone just sent me a private message, what does M2T stand for? Um, M2T stands for Myofascial Mobility Tool. So our whole goal is to create mobility within the myofascial system. We want to find out what's not moving and make it move better, then we can stabilize from there. So again, what is mobility? So mobility is the ability to move freely without the limitation to normal range of motion. Like we just talked about, the knee with the ankle and the hip. How many of our clients or us have restricted mobility? Probably everyone. If we have restricted mobility, does that mean we don't have pain? No. We can have immobility problems, but again, that will get, lead us to a greater chance of experiencing pain or injury. So how many of us prevent and treat our restrictions? Probably not a lot of us. Uh, so this is a poor model to use. Like we like to say, we don't wait for the car engine to blow up before we add the oil. A soldier doesn't wait till the gun goes to battle before he has his gun jammed. So then the final thing we do is corrective exercise. Corrective techniques will be determined from the assessment and to reinforce. For example, if anybody in here is a massage therapist and you have a client that comes in, um, they, have poor they have poor shoulder mobility, they have four rounded shoulders, you work on their pecs, their shoulders, their rhomboids, their artissimus dorsi, they get off your table, they'll go right into that normal, that normal posture. The reason why they do this is that's the most comfortable position that their body's in and the position that their body is going to revert right back into. So how we prevent this? Well, we create tissue mobility and then we strengthen and re-educate the body to move in a proper normal range of motion. So we can do lots of techniques. So we can do foam rolling, we can do strengthening, we can do various flexibility techniques, and we can do what's called agonist antagonist techniques. Now, fourth one is my favorite. Agonist antagonist techniques is my favorite technique to use to reestablish the neurological firing of that muscle. It's a very simple concept to, um, to learn, and it can be done very easily without any load or stress to the body. So like we talked before, we always want mobility before stability. So when we're using our instrument and we're assessing going through the ranges of motion, we want to find out, okay, what's not moving and how we can make it move better. We keep talking about um, the ankle, hip, and knee, again, because that's the most common um, dysfunction we talk about. So I just spent the last three weeks in India and Vietnam teaching this course and rolling out this program within those countries. So the number one issue we see is, is knee pain. Everybody has osteoarthritis of the knee. Everybody has knee pain. Um, they don't like moving their knees. So if they have limited range of motion through their hip, something has to move more. Most likely, it's their lower back or the lumbar spine or their knee. So and we've talked about this slide a little bit more. So what is mobility? The ability to move freely. So our goal with assessment. The triangle on the left is what we want you guys to do. So we want you to spend most of your time assessing, treating, and then correcting. Assessment should be the cornerstone of any treatment like we talked about before. Always assessing, always reassessing, always making sure we create better mobility patterns. Currently what we see is the triangle on the right. Very small assessment, a lot of exercise, and most of the time is spent treating. Now one of the things we really love with the M2T blade is actually really cuts down your treatment time. 
if anybody in here, I see a couple of people that have done our course in the past here. When you use our tool, it actually, A, doesn't it saves your hands, and B, it really cuts down on that treatment time. So you don't have to spend that much time um, with those tissues. We can get better results faster um, and more efficiently as well. So when we're going through our functional assessment, we want to look at kinetic chains. Now, I've kind of added these slides in since I we went to Vietnam because we saw that kinetic chain was a new concept over in um, Vietnam and India where they still go by the joint-by-joint -joint approach. If somebody has an ankle issue, they treat the ankle. If somebody has a lower back issue, they treat the lower back. But what we have to realize is that the body works as a synergistic um, synergistic uh, machine. Every muscle and joint works together to create locomotion. So again, if somebody has low back pain, it's not just lower back they have issues with. Their hips are going to be tight, their core is going to be sloppy. Now, uh, sloppy means tight and weak, and their thoracic spine or their T-spine is going to be tight. Knee pain. So if somebody has knee pain, we like we talked about a few times before, ankles are going to be tight, low back knees are sloppy and LPHC, so the lumbopelvic hip complex, is going to be tight. And the last one is the shoulder and neck pain. So if somebody has shoulder neck pain, we want to look at their pecs. Their pecs are most likely going to be tight. Shoulders are going to be sloppy, and the scapula is going to be tight, meaning there's not a lot of movement within that scapula. <clears throat> so like we talked about before, we do our dynamic movement testing. So form predicts function. We want to see how somebody moves and how they're not moving properly. Now, in this webinar today, we're not going to take everybody through the actual dynamic movement testing. We're just going to kind of explain it. When you do our course, we actually give you all the tests, what to look for, and how to find patterns of people not moving. So you can really specifically find out where they're not moving and how to create better mobility to create a better movement pattern. So form predicts function. Your patient needs to move properly in everyday situations. When we do our live course, we have everybody stand up. We have them try to do a squat without, or sorry, we have them try to do a sit on the chair without squatting. So no matter what you do in the everyday life, you need to squat and move. So again, if you're walking up the stairs, you need to do a squatting motion. If you need to sit in your car, you need to do a squatting motion. If you want to sit on the toilet, you need to do a squatting motion. So we always go through these basic movements to find out what's not going on. Now, if you're a massage therapist or chiropractor, it works very well. You can have somebody sit in a chair and stand up very quickly and very easily and find out what's restricted and what's not moving. These tests don't need to take a whole ton of time, but you can identify very quickly of what's going on. So with this, we're going to test baseline movements and find out our immobility patterns, correctly identify dysfunction that could lead to pain, and we can help identify what kind of chains are restricted and why our clients are experiencing pain. So I know we talk about this a lot, mobility before stability. So we need to create a mobile pattern before we create a stable mobile pattern. I know this is a newer concept for a lot of people. Uh, I know when I went to school, we always talked about creating stability within the joint, um, creating stability, but we want to create mobility and movement prior to stability. So when something is stiff, something has to compensate. Like we talked about plenty of times, the knee joint. So once we do our functional movement, we go into our muscle testing. Now, again, our whole purpose with um, – yes, our audio is not gone. I just uh, I just need to drink water, so I, I put it on mute so you didn't hear me, hear me uh, drinking water. Um, so when we go through our functional movement, we, don't, we just want to find out what's happening. We don't care about the why. We take them through those exercises, and we just find out what's happening. We don't care why. We want to find out what's not moving, what could be moving better. Then we want to go into further investigation. Our further investigation is going to be muscle testing. Now, there's lots of forms of muscle testing out there. When we do our course, we teach a very simple form of muscle testing to see how the muscle 
is performing, if it's restricted, and then we go into our range of motion. So with muscle testing, we can find out if there's muscle dysfunction, if it's nerve, chemical, muscle, or joint, and which why it's restricted. So when we go through our course, we want to understand the layers of why it's not functioning. I know we always talk about um, can it change, stuff moving together, the body's a, a movement, but when we find out what's not moving, we need to find out the exact issue of why it's not moving. So we go from a global approach, which is our functional dynamic approach, to a specific approach, which is our muscle testing. For example, if somebody, we take them through a squat movement, we say they're not moving very well, we can see through their hips are restricted, their ankles are restricted. We will then go to the hip and further investigate what muscles are restricted, what muscles are caught together. We can do that through muscle testing and range motion in our live course or in our master's course online. We teach this methodology. So we're going to actually find out what's not moving and make it move better through muscle testing. From there, we can take our tool, improve the strength of the muscle, improve the range of motion, improve that sliding gliding, and create for better mobility. So muscle test the outline. So this is very, we don't show this because we're just on a PowerPoint now, but we want to put the muscle in a short position. Then we want to drive, drive a force in line with the tester form, put the muscle in a short position, and we test three to five seconds. So we're not going to do too much today. If you do our live seminar live course, we talk about this there. So let's go into IASTM, so Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Mobilization. So what is it and why do we care about it? So again, our goal is not to just teach you about Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Mobilization. We want to teach you about, about movement, how to create someone to move better. And our tool, which is the M2D Blade, is a tool to create mobility and decrease pain. So Instrument Assisted Soft, soft Tissue Mobilization is a new form of treatment of the fascia and connective tissue. A newly developed tools allows the therapist in an extremely efficient way to locate functional disorders of the connective tissue and to treat. So most, most importantly, this is not just a treatment tool, it's also an assessment tool. So when we go through our hierarchy of assessment, we use this after we do our range of motion, our muscle testing, our soft tissue palpation, and then we use the then we use a tool. So when we use the tool, we can find out the exact area of restriction create mobility, and really be specific and fine-tuned with our treatments. So IASTM is carried out with an ergonomic design tool, which we call the blade, with an aid of fascial restriction, can be detected and treated. It also allows for the rapid localization and treatment of fibrosis, chronic inflammation, and degeneration. The ergonomic design of the blade allows the therapist to track down adhesions in the fascia and treat them with reasonable pressure and thrust technique. So one thing is very different. If you use our tool, um, it's a very non-aggressive tool. So we don't want to create bruising, create pain, create, dis create more dysfunction, create discomfort. It's a very light and easy to use tool that you just need reasonable pressure through the tool. The way we, we're going to talk about the, the cuts on the angles shortly, but when we design the tool, we create it at a certain angles, so you don't need to use a lot of force to create the desired outcome. So the triggering of control micro so sorry, the ergonomic design blade allows for the there was tracked out adhesions in the fashion, treat them with variable pressure and thrust technique. The triggering of control microtrauma in the affected tissue stimulate local inflammation. This microtrauma initiates reabsorption fibrosis, scar tissue, thus the process are initiated and the tissues can reorganize. So more about fascia. So the fascia system has been termed by Graz in 1938 as a functional joint because it provides strength, structure, extensibility, and flexibility all in one. It weaves itself through muscles, ligaments, and joints, but only that, the nerves, head, brain, and organs. So when we have muscles and we're going through movement, our muscles must slide and glide over top of one another. So our mu every muscle is actually wrapped around a fascia. I like to think of fascia like a saran wrap. So we have this saran wrap, sticky wrap, or plastic wrap that surrounds our muscles that and our muscles slide over top of one another. For example, we see this at the IT band. So the IT band actually glides over top of the vastus lateralis when our knee goes into flexion and extension. If somebody has IT band issues, 
that IT band is usually adhesed to the vas lateralis, causing immobility. So we want to create mobility at the IT band. Using a foam roller or putting more compression to those tissues not work, does not work all the time. And there's ways that when you do our live course, we show you actually how to create those mobility through those two tissues. Another spot we see that is the, is the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior. When I go into shoulder abduction or I go into any kind of shoulder range of motion, latissimus dorsi must slide over top of the serratus anterior. Now, a lot of those times, if you palpate over top of those two muscles on any one of your clients, you'll find it to be very, very tender. So we can use an instrument, create that mobility between those two tissues, create more range of motion, and get this shoulder to move a lot better. So myofascial adhesion, this is what we're tracking down. So like we talked about in the previous slide, fascia is the connective tissue within the, the body. Think of your entire body wrapped in fishnet hose, both internally and externally, including each individual bone, nerve, and muscle. Over time, the fishnet hose gets entangled and requires adjustment. If not, you'll develop an impingement. Fascia works in the same manner. Once the fascia becomes entangled, impingement will occur. It may impinge blood circulation, muscle, or movement, or nerves in the body over time. These myofascial adhesions occur as a result of unintended impingement. So like we talked about, when muscles get stuck back and when muscles get stuck to each other, like the vastus lateralis in the IT band or the latissimus dorsi in the serratus anterior, it's going to cause pain, dysfunction, and limitations in range of motion. We can use this instrument to help increase that range of motion and get those muscles to slide back and forth over one another. So here's a cross-section view of a myofascial adhesion. So you can see um, in between those two muscles, we have that white stuff. That's the myofascial adhesion. When we're using our tool, we're trying to find out those myofascial adhesions, improve that mobility, which is going to create better sliding, gliding over top of the muscles. So how we fix the condition is with instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. So when tissue is damaged, it'll reorganize, it will heal in a disorganized pattern, forming adhesions and scar tissue. These adhesions will lead to limitations in range of motion and increase in pain. So why how does this increase how does this increase pain or how does myofascial adhesions increase pain? Myofascial adhesions increase pain because the two things nerves hate are compression and stretch. If a nerve is compressed or stretched, it's going to create pain to the brain. So we want to create that mobility to take pressure off that nerve. A couple spots that we see this at is, for example, um, is at the piriformis. If the piriformis is tight or there's a myofascial adhesion there, it will cause compression at the sciatic nerve, which can cause that pain down the leg, which most of us know it as piriformis syndrome, um, pseudosciatica, and there's a couple other terms for it as well. So we use the instruments or tools to are used to aid in the practitioner's ability to detect these adhesions as well as treat them. The tools are used to restore the quality and dysfunctional soft tissue. This is achieved by introducing microtrauma to the tissues, increasing inflammation, and thereby speeding up repair within the body. So how it works. So scar tissue adhesions prevent the fluid movement of muscle, tendon, ligament, and fascia. As our M2T blade instrument glides over the adhered tissues, the stainless steel tool will reverberate the feeling in our hands. Like a stethoscope amplifies the sound of the heart, IE ASTM tools such as the M2T Blade series assist us in finding the exact areas of restriction. They will help us break down scar tissue and over time this process will reduce or limit the adhered fibers, restore function, and decrease pain. Depending on the treatment plan designed for you, the M2T Blade is used in conjunction with other techniques, modalities, and or exercise. So like we'd say, this is not a total treatment package. This is in addition to what you're already doing. This is not meant to replace anything that's happening. It's meant to be an adjunct of what's already going on or what you're already doing. So a little bit about the M2T blade. If, you're not, if you have not seen this instrument before, simply go to m2tblade.com. You'll see a picture right on the home screen. So the M2T blade is double bevel with both a superficial and deep treatment edge. So we've created one side of the tool with a 35 degree cut, which is known as a superficial edge and the other side with a 55 degree cut, which is also known as the deep edge. So you can treat superficially and deep with the same pressure depending on what side of the tool you use. We have eight treatment points to affect all areas of the body. So like some other tools have seven, eight, nine tools. We have one, and that's why it kind of looks like a, um, 
like we call it a blade or a there's a couple of other names for it out there, but it's an all-in-one treatment tool that has every point on the body. It has an integrated handle for increased control and outcomes. It can be used in either hand. It's made here right in Canada, and we also use a stainless steel. So we actually use what's called a 0.316 stainless steel. It's the same steel that's used for um, uh, any kind of surgical equipment, so it's like scalpels and all that stuff. So again, for cleanliness, it makes it a lot easier. So if you take a normal stainless steel, it will be what's called a porous stainless steel. So if I were to take it and put it underneath the microscope, you will see all these holes in the actual tool or all these uh, pores in the tool. So if you're using it on someone's skin, you'll actually see all the dirt, debris um, will actually stick within the tool. With the 0 0.316 stainless steel, it is completely smooth. So there will not be any, it won't hold on to any dirt, debris, or skin cells. This is my favorite thing here. So actually, a lot of people don't know this. We're actually the number one tool in the world. We're actually, in this, this uh, picture shows that we're in 30 countries. We're actually in 36. I just finished up in Vietnam with our team. Um, so we're the first ones in Hanoi, Vietnam that just rolled out this program. We're in 36 countries. So one of the widely used tools across the world in over 36 countries now. So actually, we need to update this um, this graphic here. So here's a picture of the tool. So you can see all treatment edges. We have one through eight. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our number one and our number two are used for our assessment edges. Our number three through eight are actually used as our, our treatment points. You can affect all areas and all tissues of the body with each one of these points. So now let's talk about assessment. So how we can use this to actually assess tissue. So your assessment should include global movement, range of motion, strength, and tissue quality. The M2T, which is called the myofascial mobility tool, can be used as part of your assessment to determine the tissue quality. So order of assessment, again, if you do our live, um, if you do our live training seminar, we actually go through our entire global movement testing. So we spend a couple hours going through all this so you can determine exactly where to use a tool, exactly where to apply exercise. So start off with global movement testing. Then we go into range of motion, muscle and strength testing, soft tissue palpation, which is with your hand. Then we use our assessment with the M2T. From there, we go into our treatment. We go retest and our corrective exercise. So again, let me talk about our assessment step. So once we determine the area of weakness, instability, or pain, we'll use the M2T blade for further education and treatment. So how we use this to detect faulty tissues. Once the area of interest has been narrowed down by the assessment, the M2T kit is used to find the specific areas of restriction. When sweeping the M2T over the adhered tissue, there will be a tactile feedback felt through the tool into the practitioner's hand. Once the areas of interest are identified, treatment with the M2T can proceed. So you go through your functional movement, your client comes in, they say they have knee pain. You take them through a squatting motion, you see that the um, you, there's instability through the hip. You go through some range of motion muscle testing. You find out that the glute med and the glute max are weak or they're immobile. You can take the instrument. You can sweep over top of those two tissues and find out the exact area of where the malfascial adhesions are. And by knowing that, or sort of how to come to know that, is you'll get an actual reverberation through the tool where you can feel exactly where those adhesions are. Not only will the clinician feel it, your patient will feel it as well. So now we want to go into our treatment. So emollient cream or lotion should be applied to the patient to help prevent skin irritation. Tissues should be treated from superficial to deep. When we hold the M2T must always be held at a 45 degree angle to the targeted tissues. The M2T can be pushed or pulled but should only be used in one direction at a time. Like we talked about, only moderate pressure should be used through the instrument. Again, we designed this tool that you don't need a lot of pressure to actually go through this. If severe reddening of the patient's skin develops, it's usually a sign time to move on to the next area of interest. So treatment with the M2T, we can put our tissues in a couple of different motions. We can do a lengthened position, shortened position. Now, one of the newest things we're doing is actually putting it underneath the load. Because again, all our clients walk and they move and they, they're active. So we want to go into that same motion that the clients are doing. So we're actually teaching this now, putting the tissues underneath the load and treating the tissues while they're in that. Then we go into our active movement. And this is all stuff as well that we'll show when you do our live program.
So other techniques. So the empty blade can be used in any direction. The practitioner must assess the line dysfunction first prior to treatment. So when we assess when we assess the patient, we want to assess the line dysfunction to find out exactly where there it is. Once we're that, we can use what's called straight strokes, fanning or feathering, or pinning and stripping. Last little portion here is we have our correctives and movements. Like we talked about at the very beginning of this presentation, we don't want to just go through our instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization work and then leave our patients to go to their normal day. We need to re-educate the actual neural pathways to make them stronger. So just a quick review is we go through our assessment, our treatment, then we go into our agonist antagonist retraining or corrective. So isometric agonist antagonist retraining and corrective. That's what we're going to do for a major corrective after instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. So this is a technique to reestablish the neurological firing pattern that the muscle will experience with normal corrective or rehab exercise without putting a dynamic load or stress to the muscle or joint. After an injury or repetitive strain, the receptors in the muscle, ligaments, and tendons and fascia are altered and may send abnormal signals slash information back to the spinal cord or the brain. When a muscle or joint is injured, movement may be impaired, which will increase activity of the nociceptors and which increases pain around the joint. Mechanical receptor activity is reduced since joint movement is restricted. Isometric agonist antagonists will increase the mechanoreceptor activity, which will influence the nervous system at the spinal level and inhibit the nociceptor activity, hence why it feels better to move an injured area. So why we do this after instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization is when an area is sustained an injury, the soft tissue or movement pattern there will be limited neurological firing, blood flow, or nutrition to the area. When we perform isometric agonist antagonist retraining, we improve neurological response, we prepare the tissues for the everyday movement, and we retrain the impaired muscle or movement. So how we do this? So just like the appropriate muscle testing, the practitioner slash trainer will shorten the tendon muscle while applying a perpendicular force that matches the strength of the tissue or move it for seven seconds. Once completed, the practitioner trainer will perform the same technique to the antagonistic muscle. Repeat three to five times. So we're just trying to open up that neural pathway and getting those muscles to move a little bit better. So that's our entire promotion here. Or that's our entire um, presentation today. So again, we just want to introduce a lot of people of how you can go through instrument soft tissue mobilization work through functional movement, instrument work, and then our correctives. Our major goal within our education firm is that we don't want to just teach about instrument work. We want to teach about the whole rounded approach. And there's a lot more of just working on tissues versus trying to trying to just use a metal instrument versus a create better movement. So we do have a little bit of promotion for you guys. So if you guys want, I know we have people all across um, in different countries on our webinar today. So we actually have a promotion that we have going on that one of our sales reps is running right now. So we have what's called a master certification. What you'll receive in this master certification is that you'll actually get the MCD blade instrument. You get a training manual, certification video series, and private coaching via Skype or Google Hangout with one of our master trainers. You get full access to a personal instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization course and six hours of training in level one instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization certification. For this webinar, we're actually throwing in a kinesiology tape program as well. So you get five rolls of tape plus a um, a free online training and certification for kinesiology tape as well, which is completely free if anybody from our webinar wants to grab that as well. If you want to get early access to that, we're only opening up to people in our webinar, is simply go to the link above. So it's m2tblade.com backslash m2t. I'm not going to read out the whole thing. You can copy and paste there. I'll also have my assistant, Daniel, send out a full email to everybody. that You can click on that link if you want to reserve it, or you can just email craig at m2tblade.com. So if you have any questions, let's go through those now. I haven't seen too many. Um, I haven't seen too many pop out here. So we have a few minutes. If you guys do have any questions, um, let me know, and we can go through them here. Again, if you don't want to, if you don't have any questions, you can always email our team directly at support at m2tblade.com, and one of our um, master coaches can get out to you as fast as they can. <clears throat> Good. So it looks like we don't have any questions. Again. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. If you're in Canada, happy Canada Day. If you're in the States, happy 4th of July on, on the Monday. Um, so again, email Craig at Craig at M2Dblade.com.
If you have any questions, email our support at m2tblade.com. We hope to see you. We try to run free webinars at least once or twice a month because we really believe in soft tissue mobilization and that this stuff can really help your clients and patients. Again, we hope to see everybody later. Have a great day, guys.